Hey there, it's Chris from Goodroads, and I am very excited about this video because I have finally finished this, my method for casting skateboard wheels, and I am ready to share it with all of you. See, I've been working on this set of 3D printable molds and printable wheel cores to try to tackle the puzzle of how we can cast proper urethane skateboard wheels at home. I cast my first wheel a few months ago with an early version of the system, and the kit has undergone a lot of development since then. I replaced the 3D printed threaded section with a nut and bolt. I've redesigned the whole system to print with much less material. I've added flanges and knurling, both for strength and to give you a more positive grip when assembling and disassembling the mold. And I've generally fine-tuned as much as I can about this system to make it easy to use. I've also designed a new core. So in addition to the original mid-style core I came up with, I also now have this triple round style core. The new core is not only more in line with the modern zeitgeist of wheel design, it's also a lot easier to print cleanly and, if your bridging is good, it can be printed without supports. The whole system is actually printable without supports because I don't like wasting plastic. The designs for the wheels and therefore the cores and the molds are all free and open source. I'm releasing them under the Creative Commons Attribution License and you can get all of those files on my website. I'll have a link down below. All that particular license means is that if you do go on to use these, you got to attribute the original creator me. So, how does it all work? How do we make wheels? Let's get into it. Well, to start, we need to take a look at the mold. The mold is a system of three printed parts, the mold base, the mold wall, and the mold insert. And along with the nut and bolt, these three pieces assemble together to form a cavity in the shape of the wheel we're casting. They also clamp the core of the wheel in place and keep it oriented. But in order to overcome some of the limitations of 3D printing, we've got to put in some elbow grease and do some post-processing. 3D printing works by adding material layer by layer, and these layers leave ridges in the finished part. If we were to cast urethane in a printed part like this, with no post-processing, the urethane would flow into all those ridges and lock the wheel in the mold. We wouldn't be able to get it out. So we need to make sure that all the surfaces that are going to be touching our urethane are nice and smooth. My method of choice for that so far has been sanding my printed parts down, starting at 80 grit and working all the way down to wet sanding at 600. And in addition to the sanding, I've also been applying a paste wax. This does double duty of filling in the scuffs and scratches left from sanding, and it also gives me a buffable surface that helps act as a mold release. I apply the paste wax generously, and when it's dry, I come back and buff it till it shines. For what it's worth, I think there's probably a ton of viable ways of doing this post-processing. I imagine a Bondo-type filler would work. Some of you have also recommended printing an ABS and doing a vapor smoothing. There really are a lot of options, I just haven't had time to experiment with all of them yet. So if you do take a stab at this, let me know how you do your post-processing because I'm curious about what else might work. Now that our molds are done, we're ready to cast some wheels. But before getting everything together, it's a good idea to apply a mold release to our mold. I've just been using petroleum jelly, so once you've done that, it's time to assemble the mold around a wheel core. The core gets seated in the mold base, and the mold insert is screwed down to clamp the core in place. You don't want to clamp it down so hard that your printed parts break, but you do want to be firm. Getting that core aligned properly is what will determine whether or not your wheels roll smoothly. Next, we need to mix up a batch of urethane. For this set of wheels, I'm using Specialty Resins Flexit 90, which is a 90A urethane. The default wheel design for the kit is an offset freestyle or street style skate wheel, and a 90A hardness should work really well for the kind of riding that I want to use these wheels for. I've also pre-pigmented the side B of my resin. Since I'm casting my wheels one at a time, this means that I don't need to try to remix my color for every wheel. I should be able to easily get the same color every time. Once you've measured and mixed your resin, pour it into the mold using the built-in pour funnel. At this point, I move my mold into my pressure pot to cure. There's been a lot of discussion in the comments about whether a vacuum chamber would also work for this. I think it could, it would probably depend a lot on the urethane being used, but in this case, unlike the homemade bushings, I don't think it's possible to cast a safe set of wheels without either vacuum degassing or using pressure to eliminate bubbles. So make sure to take the proper steps to get a good cast. Once the cure is done, take the mold out of the pot and disassemble it. If you've overfilled the mold like I did here and the urethane is cured up in the pour funnel, you can remove the mold insert and cut the spare resin away, which should allow you to easily demold the wheel. Ha <laughs> ha 
Yeah. Yes. Oh, dude, that's so sick. Hell yes. Once your wheel has been removed from the mold, you can use flush cutters or an X-Acto knife to remove the flashing. This will square up the lip of the wheel and make it ready to ride. The molds have specifically been designed so that the pour spout is not on the rolling surface of the wheel. This way, if your post cure cleanup is a little rough around the edges, it shouldn't have a huge impact on how the wheel performs. Check the data sheet of your resin to see if it needs any extra time to get to a full cure, and then your wheels are ready to ride. Let me tell you, I am shocked, shocked at how much these feel just kind of like normal skate wheels. They roll smooth, they grip well, they sound like normal skate wheels, they even, you know, skirt when you slide them. They came out really good. And ever since I shot that little bit of riding footage, every time I've come out here to do some work, I've gotten some practice in and the wheels have been holding up great. And my ollies have been getting a little better. Now, one thing to note here, guys. These homemade wheels are low precision. They have 3D printed cores, which no matter how you slice it, is never gonna hold up to the strength of an injection molded part. And since we're making them at home, they're gonna be cast out of mostly untested urethanes using processes that are not as able to get repeatable, guaranteed results the same way a wheel made in a factory would. What I'm getting at here is these homemade wheels are potentially very unsafe. If you're gonna give casting wheels a shot, and I'm not gonna lie, it's awesome. You need to be very careful with the wheels that you make. Really put the wheels through their paces with some mellow, low impact riding before you put yourself in a situation where a catastrophic failure would mean a really bad slam. Be smart about this and stay safe. Some good news on that front is I can kinda sorta vouch for the urethane that I used to make the wheels in this video. I've been talking to at skatewheelmaker on Instagram and he's been doing this for a lot longer than I am. He's a true master of the homemade and small scale wheel casting. So check out his work on Instagram and give him a follow because the stuff that he does is really, really cool. Anyway, he told me that the Flexit 90 that I used to make these wheels actually works pretty well. It just doesn't hold up to abrasion all that great. Which on one hand means that that these might not be the greatest wheels for street skating, but on the other hand, it does make me wonder if I couldn't lay down some nice thane lines. We'll have to give some downhill sliding a shot with these. As I mentioned before, all the files you're gonna need for this project are available for free on my website, and if you don't have access to a 3D printer, there are a limited number of pre-printed sets available in the shop. For what it's worth, the price of those kits and the, uh, the bushing kits from the last video as well are just based on printing time and materials. It doesn't really reflect the amount of care and work that I put into making these. I just wanna get some of them out into your hands. I wanna get people making these components. I've also gotta give a huge shout out to my patrons over on Patreon. There's a growing group of awesome people over there chipping in just a little bit so that I can afford the materials to do the R&D for projects like this. And my next goal for an open source part is gonna be a skate wheel that doesn't need a core. So if that's something you might be interested in seeing, why not check out the Patreon. Supporting over there is one of the best ways to make that happen. So, there it is. An inexpensive, customizable, relatively easy method of making wheels is now available to the whole world. And really, this marks the completion of a dream that I've had for many years. We can make wheels at home. I'm really excited and joyful about this one. I took what felt like a Hail Mary shot at the beginning of this year, buying my first batch of resin, hoping that I might be able to make some cool skate parts with it, and look where we are now. Yeah, so if you like this video, if you like this project, and you wanna see what other kinds of really cool DIY board sport type stuff we get up to here on the channel, why not subscribe? If you got any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'm betting that the conversation about this one's gonna be pretty interesting, so don't be shy. And as always, I love having you come along with me for the journey. Thanks so much for stopping by, and until next time, I'll see you soon. I wonder if I can make them skirt. Yeah, you hear that? Sounds like skate wheels. This is a super smooth floor. Ugh. I'm a happy boy.